guys, it's Michelle Tavino here from Saskatchewan, Canada. I'm going to talk about some of the chainsaw carving and power tools that I use um, to make my log sculptures. So we'll start off with my chainsaws. I am a still chainsaw girl. It just happens to be what's locally available and I think they're really good quality and good service on them. So that's what I've ended up using. Um, MS180C, this is my all around go-to carving saw. It gets the most work. And as you can see, it gets worked. It's a, it's a working tool. Um, not in pristine condition, but that tells me that it's doing its job. Um, MS180C, I've been using, this is the second one I've owned. The previous one had a hard life before I started with it. So uh, this one I upgraded and replaced uh, recently and it gets the most work. Um, when the stock 16 inch bar is just not quite enough detail, I need something a little more fine, I switch over to my Canon carving bar, which has a smaller tip on it. And I guess a person could dedicate a different saw just for a carving bar. However, I just switched mine out. Another saw I have in my collection is a battery operated MSA 140C from Still. And I bought this one um, during a very cold winter and I was in the middle of a project that I was in a bit of a rush to get done, but it was really difficult to work outside. I thought I have to work inside somehow. So I picked up this battery saw and um, it's, it's mediocre for, for carving. It has its place, like the odd time if you wanna do some surface texturing or just do a really quick cut and you're indoors and you don't want the, fl the fumes to bother you this one does the job. I also use it for cutting diamond willow sticks out in the bush and it's kind of small and light and nimble to carry around. Um, it will not have the power to do a lot of the big cuts. It bogs down in the deep cuts and the batteries go pretty quick when you're working it. I get like 20 minutes out of a battery. So I had to buy three batteries and two chargers just to kind of keep up with it. Not the saw that I use the most, but it does have its place occasionally when needed. And then once my original uh, carving saw, I was getting into the larger carvings, I noticed the need for a little more zip, a little more go. I needed some more power for some of the bigger carvings and the bigger cuts. So that's when the MS291C came in. So this is my big blocking out saw or ripping through a big length of log. It has the power to get through a big stump. It doesn't bog down and it is my little powerhouse. Not so little powder powerhouse, but um, yeah, that's my big boy saw or big girl saw. Um, another chainsaw attachment that I occasionally use is the Log Wizard. It is a debarking planer tool. Um, it is permanently mounted onto a chainsaw bar, which I switch out on my chainsaw as I want to use it. And the chain runs around this end wheel to turn the planer blades, which are replaceable so you can get them uh, sharpened up if, after use. This one I use if I have got a, a fresh log that I want to get the bark off and it's really hard to peel and not feasible to do it by hand or if I just want a really smooth finish on the outside of the log. Um, this one does a really good job. You can also use it for like creating divots or notches. Um, kind of a handy tool. It was uh, provided to me by Zach's Home Hardware in Hague. Onto the power tools. So I have the Makita die grinder. It's got a paddle switch here, which I really like. Um, pretty easy and ergonomic to handle. And uh, the the bits that I like to use are a variety of bits from Cutsall or Sabertooth. They're the burr bits in different shapes and sizes. Um, and these are helpful for starting to pull out some of the, the details in a carving. Uh, I also picked up some of these eye cutter tools, which are kind of a concave circle shape in a variety of sizes from Manfa tools. And they work really quick and easy for creating eyes or even some surface textures. And then on a smaller scale for rotary tool, there's the Dremel rotary tool. And that transition of this one went the die grinder bits were just a little too large and I need to go into some, some finer details. So attached to this one right now is a triangle cutter tool, a mini triangle cutter um, bit from Mampa Tools. Absolutely love this one. I don't know why I didn't have this one earlier. I use it so much. It's great for detailing and getting really sharp definition and for texturing and 
details, this one is so worth it. And some of the other um, rotary tool bits I use are smaller versions of like saber tooth or cuts all burr bits, or some generic ones you can find, um, even just some little stone bits. Um, really helps smooth out and, and get into those nooks and crannies for sanding. Let's talk about angle grinders. Oh, I'm starting to collect angle grinders. They are useful in a whole different, um, many, many different ways. Uh, this one is an angle grinder with a belt cutter attachment from Mampa Tools and it has a triangle wheel on it. This one makes for texturing on animals so easy. Um, I love it. I, I just recently used it on a big fox and a rabbit carving. Outstanding. Um, definitely worth it in my mind and really improved my efficiency in detailing. Another one I use most of the time is a pretty big Bosch. This is an 1821D angle grinder, which is all my all around angle grinder, a paddle switch on the bottom. Currently attached to it is an ArborTech industrial carving wheel with the guard on it. I've been using it a lot lately on my current carving and uh, it removes a lot of material really fast. Um, definitely recommend using the guard because if you don't use the guard, it spits out saw chips or cut it, uh, wood chips at such a speed it can be a little dangerous. So just use it with caution. Um, but the guard does help to direct those chips away from you and it does a really good job of removing lots of material really fast and uh, leaves a smoother finish than what the chainsaw would. Another attachment is um, this extension for an angle grinder screws onto the spindle and at the end we've got a couple circular cutters and this one's from Mampa Tools. I think they call this the crack cutter. So it gets into those little nooks and crannies and, and cleans those out again. Really nice smooth finish um, and I use it in any like folds or, or hard to reach places. That one is a new favorite. And then another attachment for the grinders is a uh, flap disc sanding disc which works really good for sanding everything down. Uh, when you're getting close to finishing, use those quite a bit and replace them a lot. Another sanding tool I use, I use a drill and this is just a mop sander bit um, in here and it's a little less aggressive than the flap disc I just showed you um, and it's, it gets into a little, little nook of crannies, these little fingers of the sandpaper get into um, all the grooves really nicely. They don't look like this when they're new. When they're new, they look like like this guy, but after you use them, they fluff up a little bit, and that's a nice tool to have help with the finishing side of things. And the last thing, it's not really a power tool, but I use a lot, is the propane torch um, for um, adding texture, or not texture, contrast, adding contrast to the wood. It also helps close the wood grains, um, and then burn away all those little fuzzies leftover um, from chainsaw carving. Um, if I usually go over most of my carvings and give it a base of contrast like on all the shadows or places that I want darker. I do that even before if I'm going to end up staining the carving or oiling it and it just, it just adds that underlying um, emphasis of the, the contrast that I'm looking for in the carving. If you overdo it you can always sand off a little more that uh, those charred areas but heard paint torch. From what I've told, the yellow bottles burn a little bit hotter than the blue bottles. And uh, that's about all I use in my regular lineup of chainsaw carving and power tool carving. I know there are plenty of other tools out there. I am always looking for new opportunities to try things out um, and invest in new tools that make the carving a little more efficient or safer or just give a new texture, a new look. Um, this is by no means a, a beginner setup, but it just this is what I've collected over the past uh, couple years on, you know, on this journey of chainsaw carving.